All right, so the Razer Arachi V2. This is going to be a really exciting mouse, especially for people who want something that will last forever, that isn't exactly a G305 nor a Rival 3 slash Aerox 3 from SteelSeries, but you know, Razer's approach to something that is mobile, has fantastic performance, and is in that affordable realm as well. Blah, blah, blah. Affordable realm as well. Hello, good people, I'm Dimitri, the Arachi V2. Not a name that I can pronounce very comfortably, but still, this is a fantastic performer, probably going to be your next wireless mouse. Um, and Razer has been on the ball when it comes to releasing something that is both competitive, affordable, and like feature-packed and future-proof for 2021. And this guy is no exception. I never thought I'd say this, but it will be replacing my G305s around the office. I use one on my desktop for editing. So now I'll be using the Arachi V2. And I also have the G305 in black for my notebook. And yes, it will also be replacing that. Basically, if you're looking for a lighter, slightly smaller G305 with much better battery life, you've come to the right place. All right, let's review right after this. Show off the cool build and not the cables with the new Corsair 5000 series. Welcome the all new interior you'll appreciate for whatever build you desire without any hassle of cable management and appropriate cooling all around with proper dust filtration on all three models. Check it out below. Welcome back. First of all, let's get the price out of the way, $69. Nice. I would say it's pretty competitor versus the G305, versus the Rival 3 wireless, versus the Aerox 3 wireless as well. In my eyes, having that dual connectivity, both 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth is fantastic. Having a dongle plugged into your main PC and use Bluetooth, for example, with a notebook is awesome. You know, that seamless connectivity. Now for a $20 premium at $89, you can pick up the Arachi V2 with a Razer custom design that you design yourself. Because the top plate is removable, you will get a standard black base of the mount House, but with your own custom top plate, which is so cool. Not only do you get to configure the colors, but also having these pre-built stock designs, all of which are actually pretty unique and interesting. You know, if you're looking to spice up your setup to $20, I mean, it's still kind of expensive, but uh, who else is doing that? You know, kind of, you, you can skin your mouse directly from Razer without having to go to a third party. That's pretty unique. Now let's get the basics out of the way. As you can see, there are no honeycomb shells, no perforations whatsoever. I am really happy that Razer is continuing the whole solid shell approach without sacrificing on build quality because this mouse is built very well. There's nothing creaking. And even though we have this removable shell at the top, it still pops in nicely. Uh, and from sides and top to bottom, there is no creaking. I really appreciate that. As you can see below the top cover, we have that USB compartment. We have two battery compartments as well, one for AAA and one for AA, which is so cool because now you can swap out the battery and not only have the option to switch between a slightly smaller one for lighter weight or the slightly bigger one for better capacity and better battery life, but you now almost have this way to customize the weight balance of the mouse. So for me, I prefer the included AA battery right in the, in the middle because it gives me the best balance. With the slightly smaller battery, it does give me a slightly back heavy mouse, which I don't like. For this mouse, I feel like the default configuration out of the box is the most ideal balance to weight distribution. And you notice uh, they are slightly angled both to support the shape, but also it is uh, kind of like to support the overall balance of the mouse and Razer has definitely nailed that. In terms of weight, you're looking at about a 58 gram body without any batteries. 73 gram body with the included AA battery. By itself, the battery is about 15 grams. Uh, and if using a slightly smaller AAA battery, you can see it's about 69 grams. In comparison, the G305 with the same AA lithium battery is about 89 grams versus Aerox 3 wireless is 68 grams. It has the built-in battery and the Model O wireless is around 71 grams. So yes, Razer for their $69 mouse is very competitive weight-wise. The dongle, by the way, stashes inside the body, so you can always have the dongle with you when you travel. You can see it's clearly labeled, which is fantastic in case you have other Razer peripherals. And this dongle has multi-device support, which means you can use other Razer peripherals, the wireless ones, off a single USB dongle, including uh, support for the Arachi V2. That is huge news. And Razer is one of the first companies to actually implement something that is a bit more you know, standardized and more mainstream. Uh, the supported device list is still pretty short, but it's pretty cool how you can run, let's say your keyboard 
and a mouse off a single USB dongle, so thus saving a USB port. Now, Razer Synapse will detect supported devices and automatically connect them to the single USB dongle, but uh, Razer does tell me that it might introduce some interference depending on the setup. This interference might be in the form of signal loss or like stuttering that you normally find with 2.4 gigahertz wireless peripherals. Perhaps it's not something I would use for competitive stuff, but it's definitely the right way forward for multi-wireless device compatibility. It is because of the shape I will be switching all my G35s for the Arachi V2. So the slight curvature for your thumb, the proper body shape on the right side for my pinky and my ring fingers. And this back hump is very familiar to me, especially coming from the G305. I am really happy this is the shape we got instead of something like the Viper Mini, because the Mini is way too small for me and the Arachi V2 is just perfect. We also have large PTFE feet at the bottom and that switch for dual wireless connectivity. The sensor here is the Razer 5G Advanced up to 18,000 dpi, absolutely no complaints. Uh, a super performer. I really appreciate the fact that you can also lower the liftoff distance in the software to one millimeter from the default two millimeters, just to give me a little bit more control because I do lift the mouse quite often when flicking and when readjusting the mouse back into my like stock position. As for the switches, this is the second generation Razer mechanical switch. You can see they're the green, Kale GM4. They are rated at 60 million clicks. And the reason I am told they didn't choose optical switches for this mouse, like we see with all their other high-end mice, is because optical switches consume more power and they want to preserve the best battery life as possible for this wireless edition. Uh, and by the way, battery life, you can see it says 950 hours on the box, but that is 950 hours in Bluetooth mode, okay? So you cut that in half when you go into 2.4 gigahertz mode with the default battery, so around 425 hours, which is still plenty, and the battery indicator still has just the four bars inside Razer Synapse, but you can configure when you get the notifications for the low battery in the software, which is great. So you'll have plenty of time to like swap out the battery if you are running low. Plus these Kale GM4s are one of those switches that the community loves. They're super crispy, tactile, good sound profile. Take a listen. The scroll wheel is another reason I am switching all my G305s because it is incredibly precise and I have so much control of zooming into my timeline uh, and just doing anything with the scroll wheel. Fantastic work, Razer. Lastly, there is no RGB, I appreciate that. Only the RGB LED beside the DPI switch so you know which DPI you select. As for gaming, this mouse is incredible. Not only is it super lightweight and quite small, uh, at 600 DPI, I have really good control flicking, finding targets, tracking targets as well. And normally with other mice, I have disadvantages in my tracking abilities in the four quadrants of the screen. I'm either really good at like left side or the right side or the top or the bottom. With this one, I'm very balanced throughout. Also because of the small shape and my hand size, I tend to control those last few pixels after like a flick, for example, with my pinky. So the pinky's on the surface and gives me that additional resistance and control uh, so that I can really refine my aim and find the target. I was really impressed with this particular exercise and a raw chibi too, when I'm supposed to find targets as fast as possible as they appear on screen. And I had just absolutely no issues because of the perfect balance of the mouse, uh, no issues finding targets uh, above and below the cursor. Now you're probably wondering what is this grip tape you've been seeing throughout this review. And that my friend is another game changer. So Razer is launching universal grip tapes for 10 bucks and they come in different shapes and sizes that you can not only apply to a particular mouse, but also maybe on your keyboard or a controller. I find myself to play so much better when I have some grip tape on the right trigger, not on the left one for some reason. And also with the Arachi V2, I applied a little bit of grip tape below the browser buttons and also on the right side at the back hump, just to give me a little bit more security when I'm holding the mouse, when I'm flicking it, when it's going all around, uh, and that is incredible. So they're not like one use things, you know, you can peel them off, apply them to something else, but also because you have those different shapes and sizes, uh, you can basically apply them regardless of where on the mouse uh, and through other products as well. I find that to be really awesome. And so aside from an awesome mouse and a really handy universal grip tape, plus that really cool customization with Razer Customs, I feel like the Arachi V2 is one of those 
full 2021 ready releases that isn't just all bling, it's performance focused, it's lightweight, it's built well. Um, and yeah, this thing I would highly recommend if you want to try something different outside of the Aerox 3, the Rival 3 Wireless, or the G3 or 5, the Hirachi V2 would be my pick. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.